Hi, everyone. This is the last lecture for week three, and this one is going to be looking at the replication cycle of bacteria. I'm going to go to my PowerPoint and get us started on this. We are going to be talking about the replication cycles of viruses, and we will be looking at both bacteriophage. So remember, bacteriophage are viruses that infect bacteria. We will start by describing the replication cycles of bacteriophage, and there are two different types of cycles, replication cycles, that bacteriophage can do. They can do either what is called a lytic or a lysogenic replication cycle. After that, we will be looking at animal virus replication cycle and talking briefly about how they differ if it's an enveloped or a naked virus. Remember, enveloped means it has a cellular membrane that it's taken with it as it's exited a host cell while naked viruses do not. With that, I wanna briefly go to the whiteboard and talk again about the difference of the two different types of uh, viruses that we're gonna to cover today. So as we look at viral replication cycles, We're going to start out with bacteriophages. Quick reminder, these are viruses that infect bacteria. They do not infect humans or animals or plants. They specifically target bacteria, which are single-celled microorganisms. Hopefully you remember that they kind of look like a spaceship. They have a capsid that surrounds their genomic information. And then I drew what kind of looked like landing gear on them that allows them, in this case, to land on what would be a bacterial cell. Bacterial cells have genetic information in a circular chromosome. And with bacteriophage, generally speaking, what they do is when they land on a bacterial cell, and I'm going to put bacteriophage up here, and down here, I will put that this is actually a bacterial cell. This is its chromosome and up here is the genome, could be either DNA or RNA of the bacteriophage. The really cool thing about bacteriophage is they don't actually ever enter that bacterial cell. They, through this spaceship-like structure, can actually inject just their genome into the bacterial cell. Remember, that is an instruction book for making new virions. And typically what we see in what is called the lytic replication cycle is that this virus then will take over all the machinery of the, of the bacterial cell, its ribosomes, its enzymes, everything, and it will end up making new virions that look just like that parent one. And it will make thousands of these, if not more, that can then burst out and kill that bacterial cell and go on and infect other cells. And in the lytic cycle, they go through the following steps. So if this is the lytic style, the first one is that they do what is called attachment. So they attach to the outside of the bacterial cell. The second step is called penetration. And this is when that genome is injected into the bacterial cell. The third is what we would call replication or sometimes you'll see it called synthesis, but basically this is when it makes all of the proteins and copies its genome to make lots and lots of virions. The fourth step then is what is called assembly. All those parts just 
form new virions. So all the capsomeres will gather around the genome and we'll get all of the complex structure added on. And then that last step that we would see is what would be release, where they actually leave the bacterial cell to go out and infect others. The lysogenic replication cycle is a little bit different. And so I'm gonna show that as well. And then when you're going back to the slides, hopefully I'll be reviewing it. So this one was the lytic. And I always think of lytic is a short replication cycle and it's a short word. The next part I wanna talk about then is what is called the lysogenic, notice that it's a longer word, the lysogenic replication cycle. Replication cycle is long. So in this case, we're gonna start kind of like we did above. So I'm gonna draw, right? I have my bacteriophage, it has its complex Capsid, and so again, this is the bacteriophage. And this is its genome. Now, if a bacterial cell, or excuse me, a bacteriophage can go through the lysogenic replication cycle, we refer to this as what is called a temperate bacteriophage. So not all bacteriophage will go through this cycle but this is a way for them to kind of use that host cell to make many copies of themselves without doing much work. So I'll show you what this looks like. So in this case, again, I have my bacterial cell and I have that circular DNA. So this is the DNA or chromosome. And again, we're gonna start out with that same first step. This will inject its genome in here, but rather than jumping right in and starting that synthesis or replication cycle, what ends up happening is that that genome, that genetic information will insert itself into the bacterial cell chromosome. So I'm gonna go down and I'll draw this again of what this kind of looks like. So if this is my bacterial cell and this is its chromosome, remember it's circular, it now will have integrated into it the viral genome. Again, we have our bacterial DNA here. And what's cool about this is that viral genome is just kind of hanging out in the DNA of this bacterial cell. And that bacterial cell may th go through reproduction. When it goes through reproduction, it makes a copy of its chromosome to put into each of its daughter cells. So it has its genome, but when it makes the copy, it will also copy the virus part that's in there. And so the virus this whole time has just incorporated its DNA into the host DNA, and it's not doing any work, but it's making more copies of itself in new bacterial cells. And at this, at this point, we refer to this as a prophage, meaning that it's not a bacteriophage yet, but it could become one. And this can go on for many, many replication cycles. We could have millions of bacterial cells that all contain a prophage that originated from this first infection up here, okay? And then we may end up many generations later with thousands or millions of the bacterial cells with the prophage in it. And at some point, what would happen then is that these bacteria, maybe they get stressed, there isn't any food. The prophage in it will cut itself out and it will go through the synthesis, assembly and release phase. So at some point then this will go back and join into the lytic phase at step three.
The cool thing about that is that you will have millions of bacterial cells that all have that prophage, which means you're not getting virions bursting out of one bacteria. Rather, you're going to get it out of all the millions that have been replicated. And I'll go back and walk through this, hopefully, as a little bit of a review, looking at the PowerPoints. So again, a reminder, the bacteriophage are viruses that infect bacteria. The lytic replication pathway is that shorter pathway. We get infection of the host bacterial cell. It immediately builds these new virions. And then as these bacteriophage, these new ones are being released, it will kill the host cell. Again, these are the steps. We have attachment where the bacteriophage binds to the bacterial cell. Penetration, the phage then injects the genetic material into the cell, and then we get the replication. This is where the bacteriophage hijacks that host cell, transcribes and translates viral genes, and copies its genome. All of these then are packaged. The genomes are packaged into new capsids, and those phage structures will just self-assemble on their own. The last step then is that the bacterial cell will basically burst open and all of those new bacteriophages will be released and they can go infect other bacterial cells. The lysogenic replication, as I said, can be done by certain bacteriophages called temperate phages. In this case, they do the same steps of attachment and penetration, but after penetration, they're going to go through integration. At this point, their genome is going to be integrated into the host cell genome, and it is called a prophage at this point. As the cell divides, it copies that prophage into all of its offspring. And at some point, we expect that that host cell will likely be stressed. The prophage then can excise itself out of the host genome and re-enter the lytic cycle doing replication, assembly, and release. On this slide, I have the two different types of cycles. At the top is the lytic cycle. So we have attachment and penetration. At this point with that phage DNA in here, we go through the replication and self-assembly, and then we do lysis where those then leave the cell. In the lysogenic phase, which is longer, we have attachment and penetration. But in this case, it's showing that we have integration of that DNA into here. And then that bacterial cell goes through reproduction. At some point, the prophage will excise itself out and will return back to that lytic cycle, ending up with that cell lysine. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, please let me know. With bacteriophage replication, one of the things that we often think about is that prophages, when they are in a bacterial cell's DNA, they can sometimes do what we call phage conversion. And what this does is it can sometimes provide new pathogenicity factors to a bacterium, making that bacteria that's infected or has a prophage more dangerous to us. So some examples of that would be cornea bacterium diphtheriae, which causes diphtheria, and clostridium botulinum, uh, which causes botulism. If either of these two types of bacteria have a prophage in them, they're likely more dangerous to us. I always think of it as the bacteria might cause disease, but when it has kind of an irritant of a bacteriophage inside of them, they get a little bit nastier. It's almost like you've poked a bear. And so Phage conversion can make bacteria even more uh, toxic to us. That was talking about the replication cycle of bacteriophage, but for us, what I'd like to concentrate for the rest is talking about animal viruses. So when we get infected with a virus, what are the replication steps that the virus goes through in our cells? We have an added step in animal virus replication, and I'm gonna to go to the whiteboard to kind of talk through why that would be that we would have an extra step. So with animal virus replication, this looks slightly different. So if we have 
our virus with its genome. And then I'm going to draw kind of a big host cell here, right? You can imagine it's super big. This is our host cell. In this case, we likely have some sort of a receptor. And that means that likely we have some sort of spike protein that matches up to that receptor, right? So when this binds, and I'll do one as though one of them has already bound here. Right, we have a virus, a virion that has actually bound to one of our receptors. We have the step, and I'll write these kind of over here. The first step then is attachment, and that's usually through the spike protein. The second step would be penetration, meaning that that would be brought in. So we can kind of picture it coming in, and the whole virion gets brought in with animal viruses. So we have penetration, but this is where another step comes in that we didn't have with bacteriophage. That capsid has to be removed in order for the genome to be able to take over the host cell. So in this case, we have an extra step here and that is called uncoding. And that's basically the breakup of that capsomere so that that genome can be released into the host cell. Then it goes right to what we saw in bacteriophage. We have replication. We have that self-assembly. And then the last step is release. So in this case, we have six steps instead of five. One of the interesting things is that if there is a envelope around a virus, in the picture that I showed, it was a naked virus, but if there's an envelope, Usually what will happen is that as it attaches to the host cell, the envelope will merge with the host cell membrane, dumping the virion into the host cell. And as it exits the host cell, if it's enveloped, it will bud off and take part of that host cell membrane with it. So just a reminder, naked viruses release by bursting the host cell and enveloped viruses bud off of the host cell wrapped in a little cell membrane, a little of the host cell membrane. And with that, I'll move us back to our PowerPoint, finish up showing you a figure of that happening. This is giving you a nice figure of animal cell or animal virus replication. Again, we have the animal cell here with its nucleus with the DNA. We have the influenza virus. This doesn't show it, but it would, the spike proteins would attach to a receptor on the cell of the, on the, the surface of the host cell. This then gets brought into the host cell. It is uncoated after that penetration and we get replication of the capsid proteins, the spike proteins and replication of the DNA. These parts then self-assemble into new virions. And in this case, these ones would bud off and take part of the membrane with them because they are an enveloped virus. If it's not an enveloped virus, they basically just burst open that cell and those viruses are released. And in all these cases, those new virions can go on to infect other cells. I'll let you pause it here for the checking in. When you've written down the answer or said it out loud, come back in and I will answer these questions. Which cycle is shorter, lysogenic or lytic? The lytic cycle is shorter because it goes directly to replication, assembly, and release. 
what step is present in animal virus replication, but not bacteriophage replication? Uncoding, because the animal virus brings its capsid into the host cell, the bacteriophages do not. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.